after I've discussed so many functional forms, now I would like to uh, explain uh, how we can choose between those functional forms. So first of all, we need to consult the underlying theory because it might suggest a particular functional form. Like in the previous video, I discussed the model that describes the production process or the cost function. And in this case, it is better to use a polynomial function. Another thing is that the coefficients of the model chosen should satisfy certain a priori expectations. For example, if we would like to check how demand for certain product is affected by its price, yeah, logically and from the theory, we know that the relationship should be negative. Higher price leads to lower demand. Therefore, the coefficient must be negative. However, if you get a positive coefficient, that means that probably the functional form you've chosen is not the correct one and you should look for another functional form. Sometimes it might happen that more than one model, more than one functional form may fit a given set of data. Therefore, in this case, you can either report, report both results or you can, uh, uh, for example, look at the coefficient of determination of both models, compare them and choose the model which has the highest coefficient of determination. There is, all, uh, there is also a um, formal way of choosing between linear and log linear model. And, there, and this test has been developed by McKinnon, White and Davidson. So this test makes an, the following assumption. So the null hypothesis is that the linear model is the correct one. So y is a linear function of regressors of x's. And the alternative hypothesis is that the true model is the log linear model, which means that the natural logarithm of y is a linear function of logs of the regressors or the logs of x's. This step, uh, sorry, this test involves a number of steps. So first of all, we need to estimate the linear model, so the traditional one, and obtain the estimated uh, y values. And we need to save them. For example, we can call them yf. After this, we need to estimate the log linear model. So we re request the natural logarithm of y on the natural logarithms of x's and obtain the estimated ln y values. And for example, we can call them ln f. In the next step, we need to obtain a new variable. So we need to construct it and we can call it z1. And it, and it is constructed in the following way. So we take the values of yf from the first step. We take the natural logarithm of them and, we, and from them we subtract the values from the second step, l and f. After this, we need to regress the value of y on axis. So run a linear model and also regress it on z1, obtained from step 3. And we reject the null hypothesis, so we reject that the linear model is the correct one if the coefficient of z1 is statistically significant. So if it is different from 0, if it is statistically significant. After this, we move to the fifth step. We need to obtain z2 and it is constructed in the following way. So we take the antilog of L and F, so the variable from the second step, and we subtract the values of the variable from the first step, YF. After we've done this, we need to regress the natural logarithm of Y on the natural logarithms of X's. So we run the second model, the log linear model, and in addition, we include that two variable. So we reject the null hypothesis that the log linear model is the correct one if the coefficient of Z2 is statistically significant. So this is how this test looks like. It involves a lot of steps, but actually it's quite easy. And uh, during one of our workshops, we will practice. I will show you how to do this test, how to construct the variables, how to save the results. So for now, please just keep in mind that if you would like to um to use this test this is the place where you can find the the less the so-called manual right step-by-step -step explanation how to do that